what is going on collective welcome back to my channel it's your boy adam ra uh like comment share subscribe okay so uh the last couple of videos i did uh look the law of mentalism i don't know if you guys can see that or not but i did the law of mentalism uh the law of correspondence the law of vibration the law of polarity the law of gender the law of rhythm and now the last law the law of karma so essentially what happens here is you're going to have to take the collective of all of this to explain exactly what karma is. So I guess let's begin with the basics. Karma. And what is it, right? So essentially everybody has their own perception of what karma is and how it uh, how it operates, right? Just one second. Let me turn this off for a second here. Everybody has their own like own definition of what karma is or what it means to them. And I can't say that this part, you know, people are wrong at all. Right. But I am going to say that in addition to what you already believe what karma to be, that karma is the effect of everything that is the effect of the cause, right? So essentially, basically karma, it says, because of this, this is what happens. Because of this, this is what happens. Because of this, this is what happens. And where do we see this? We see this in everything that we do. We see it in uh, mathematics because we took one volume of liquid and added it to a sec another volume of liquid um, we get a combined volume of that liquid. That's the call. I mean, that's the effect of adding those together, right? Uh, we see it in everything. We see it in everything, right? Now, we do see, like, when it comes to karma, essentially, all karma is is cause and effect, okay? It's not positive or, well, it's both positive and negative, but karma is generally is just like everything else in the spiritual realm it's not inherent it's not good or bad in itself right it is designed with with that purpose in, in mind right because it's up to you and your actions to make karma positive or negative right based off of our little infinite right so what makes karma good and what makes karma bad right all of this boils down to the law of mentalism right because in our mind we have a set of perspectives right we have a set of perspectives that dictate if things are favorable or unfavorable. You see what I'm saying? So basically, karma has a way of connecting to what you believe to be favorable and unfavorable, desired and undesired in your life, right? So basically, karma is designed to audit the soul and basically what i'm saying is generally speaking whatever you're going through with however your life is right now it is based on your life is a going according to the way you designed it to be because of the decisions that you make just like with the law of mentalism what we, it's all based off what's in your mind which led to what you talked about, which led to what you um, did, which leads to the habits you developed, <clears throat> which led to your character, right? And that's exactly what happens, right? And that's exactly what happens. Everything leads to and from one another. 
So essentially, this is what happens with karma. A lot of people, they all, every time I hear like, uh, you know, karma's gonna get you, karma this, karma, 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 which is true. But it's that negative intent to that that drives me nuts. You know why? Because according to the law of correspondence, there's two sides to karma. There's the favorable side and then there's the unfavorable side, right? That leads to and from one another. Too much of any side leads to the other, right? So... We get caught up in this notation that, you know, we like to say this all the time and it's supposed to put like fear in people's hearts, you know, but people speak on karma as if it is like this dark negative thing when in reality, it is probably the most beautiful gradient of light there is to exist. Why? Because it, it's, it's, it's a form of information. It's information. It tells you where you are. It tells you who you are. It explains to you by what definitions you have lived your life according to. And as a result of you living according to these definitions, this is what you are now. This is what you're classified as based on the def definitions you spoke out or that you lived into the universe. When you are tired of being that definition, guess what? You can change it. You don't always have to be one thing in this universe. That's the most beautiful thing about karma. Karma is probably one of my favorite laws. And I'm going to tell you why. Because certain, certain, certain things happen, there's an effect to it. But it gives you, I have the mind of something like a scientist, right? So I just, I want to see what all these different concepts and things are out in this world, right? How can you see it if you don't have some kind of curve to work according to, right? So as a result, I give a little input into the universe and then I examine the output. And that right there allows me to communicate to the universe, to tell the universe what kind of person I am and the universe says, okay, if you're going to be this kind of person, this is the effect of being that kind of person. This is the wisdom that you are connecting yourself to. This is the spirit that you choose to entertain in your life. You don't get just one part of that spirit. You get all the aspect of that spirit that it corresponds with. All aspects of that wisdom that it corresponds with. You don't just get bits and pieces that you will like right you get the entire thing with karma because if it just give you what's favorable the unfavorable parts won't are designed to assist you in your growth process and your favorable aspects we are rewarded this is jupiter and saturn working together Saturn is designed to restrict us. It is Saturn is designed to be a womb. Okay. Those unfavorable things grow us, but it also protect us and others. You see? Because it's a womb. The, the spirit of karma is a womb. What you put into this womb is what you're going to reap. If you put a baby in this womb, a baby comes out. If you put a child, if you put a, a, a animal in this womb, animal comes out. Whatever you put in this womb is what comes out. It has nothing to do about good and bad. It has everything to do about who you are. Your life is a byproduct of what you are, who you are. If you don't like who you are, it's time to change. So yet, that's where the law of vibration comes in. That karma al allows you to align yourself with a vibration. And basically when karma comes and it delivers that effect to you, it says, okay, because you're in this vibration, this is what is magnetic towards you. 
This is the kind of energy that is magnetic to your current energetic field or your current vibration. You see what I'm saying? When it comes to the law of polarity, depending on which side of karma that you're on, if you're on that favorable side of karma, you're going to notice you are magnetic towards favorable outcomes. You see? When you're on that negative side of it, you will be magnetic towards unfavorable Ooh. outcomes. Why? Because there's growth that needs to be done in order to reward you. And the thing about karma is like, it's, it's, it's like I say, it's a mosaic. For me, it's, a, it's like a mosaic. It's a gradient. It's like, this is how I know if I want to stay in this energy or change. This is how I know if it's worth staying in this energy. This is how I know if it's worth dealing with certain things or certain people or holding certain weights. A lot of people, they say, oh, if it's this, if it's this, if it's that. But they stay in that karma that they're assigned to, right? With karma, we are entitled to the right to change. And we are entitled to know where we stand at that current time. Then you have the law of gender, right? Like I say, karma can be active and passive. Now, when it is active, guess what's happening? When the karma is active, that means that, of course, you see it immediately, right? But when karma is passive, that's the most dangerous. Because while it's passive with you, eventually, remember we talked about that, uh, that infinite, right? Let's say you got the active on this side and you have the passive on this side. Eventually, it's going to come down here and get so passive that it's just going to lead into some action. Sometimes it's going to be so active that eventually it curves itself out and lead to something more passive. That's how the gender is actually how genders work, right? So when it's active, it is current in your life. This is we're going to say the masculine energy, right? And then we're going to say passive is the feminine energy, right? The reason why this is act masculine and feminine, you can check the video about gender and that'll break everything down because it's not male and female. It has to do what is active and what is being created and what is, act, you know, is it's the act the the um, properties of life that is currently in flow, right? And then you have the feminine properties that are collecting. You see what I'm saying? Either it's in process, in the progress of attack, uh, act, you know, acting, or it's in the process of building up. You see what I'm saying? I think this is the worst of the karma here, because when it builds up, it builds up from years. From it builds up based off of, let's say, habits and character. Right? This active is based off of what you did, what you talked about, what was your mind, your intention. So one is going to be about your intention. You're going to get, you know, which is, you know what I'm saying? Your, the intention behind your action, right? And then the other one, other karma, which is the feminine or passive, this one build up and this has to do with your intention over time. You remember when God talked about um, waiting, what he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a field in which the enemy came at night and planted weeds. Then the servants went to God and they asked him, what shall we do? Shall we just, if we separate them now, we won't have problems later. And God said, no, let them grow together and then come harvest day, you reap it. That's exactly what this is. The feminine, the passive karma has to do with harvest day. Now, for those of you who've never experienced karma or got, you know, whatever, it is far worse to have karma that comes at you 
when you believe you are, you know, when, from way back. You see what I'm saying? Especially unresolved karma. The easiest karma to get through is the act of karma. Why? Because the act of karma has to do with like passing thoughts of behavior and emotion and feeling that very well could have been temporary and it very well could have a long lasting effect. However, once you learn the lesson, you move on. And that's the difference between the active and the passive. With the active, these are the lessons that you can learn immediately. Now the feminine, the passive, the ones that build up over time, these are the lessons you refuse to learn. The more you refuse to learn a lesson from it, the longer you go through that karma. The quicker you decide, okay, maybe I wasn't right, you know, and take shift or do what you need to do to address that karma, the sooner you can be rewarded and move on. Just like I, I don't know if I, I have never told you guys this, but the universe in itself is stasis loving. It loves to balance itself out. Karma is exactly, it's that um, hormonal, karma is a hormonal kind of um, law. It's hormonal. It operates off the hormones of the universe. When you do something good, you are rewarded like a hormone. When you do something fucked up, guess what? You are disdained like hormones do, right? Okay. So next we have the rhythm. Now, when it comes to karma, karma can be cyclical. What I mean by cyclical, it means that it can reoccur over and over and over again. It could be a circle. It can be a spiral. It can be an elliptical. Or... It can be, uh, yeah, elliptical or um, I think that's about it. I think that's it. Okay. Circular karma means that you're going to do something. It's going to lead you to the effect. You're not going to give a fuck about it. I mean, you're not going to care about it. And then you're going to do the problem all over again. This has to do with the genius, the genius um, philosophy, right? Where they say some people are so, some people are have that, uh, or I put it like this, there are geniuses out here in the world, right? And what happens with geniuses, not all geniuses, but this is something that happens with geniuses. They may think after after they plateau, feel like they're plateauing with their wisdom. Guess what they do? They have a tendency to create a problem that they themselves cannot solve. They create paradoxes or they find themselves in a paradox. And that's what this circle represents, a paradox. And so they start trying to take all of these different approaches to one problem that isn't designed to be solved. But they don't know it's not designed to be solved. It's like trying to trying to solve an undefined problem no matter what um integer you plug into this problem it's still going to exist no matter what input or out input is going to have the same output so by having the same output guess what it's looping itself right back and then this person is putting in maybe even new input but essentially, that same input has the same effect as the output input that they put in before. That's if the same if you have the same effect. You know what I'm saying? You have the same input, right? Now, when it's spiral, it's more like this. You'll do something in January, and then by let's say March, you're at this crossroad, right? And when you get to this crossroad, if you choose to go this way again, guess what? You go back around. And then it comes back around about May. You get a chance to change or change your directory. Guess what? And it goes back around if you do the same thing. You see what I'm saying? Where do we see this? We see this with the, with the Mercury retrograde. Okay. Now, with the Mercury retrograde, <laughs> what happens is we go all around. We have this, this retrograde, right? And we go through it, right? 
And then we come back to the loop of this retrograde. A lot of the problems that we had before start taking root and start taking place. Those who haven't took the time to heal from whatever this is, like there's there's the thing of getting through and then there's the thing of learning through, right? Uh, breakthrough, right? If you just get through this loop in karma, guess what? You're going to have to go through it again until you have that breakthrough. And it's just going to keep repeating. Until you learn the breakthrough of your, let's say, Mercury retrograde or whatever time of the year or uh, astrological influence that throws your energy off the most. When you go through that, if you decide to still keep, if you don't do the breakthrough, if you don't break through it, if you don't learn a lesson and apply it, the, you know, not just when this comes around, but all year round, that is what's going to get you out of that cycle. And then there's the elliptical, right? This elliptical has to do with generational curses or generations. So it may go, this energy may go out and out and out. And after a set turn, a set time being out, it starts to return and it finds itself back where it comes from. And then it goes back out and comes back in. The reason why this and this are different is because this right here has to do with, let's say, I don't know, it's, it's more, it's more, uh, it's, it has a longer space of time in between. That's why I consider this to be like generational curses or um, let's say, Yeah, more like generational curses and stuff like that. With this right here, this has to do with personality disorders. So this is personal. This has to do with person, uh, person. This is on a personal level. This is on a interpersonal level. This is how you deal with you know other people or how you deal with things outside of yourself. This is how you deal with yourself. This is outside of yourself. And then this right here has to deal with your connection to the world in large. You see what I'm saying? So essentially, there's three types of karmas. <laughs> there's karma you're going to pay because of your own behaviors. There's karma you're going to pay based off of, you know, what you surround yourself around the group. Right. And then there's karma based off of the groups that you are connected to based off of their history. So there's three karmas here, three of them. And now that was just those three. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. So everything, it has a rhythm to it. You know what I'm saying? It has a peak. It has a low point. And then it peaks. And then a low point. It has that, right? It has that. The peak is whatever you make it to be. The low point is whatever you make it, is the opposite of whatever you make it be. So if you say that this is the favorable part, this right here will be the undesired part. Everything is in balance because the world is, I mean, the whole universe is stasis loving. So when it comes to karma, excuse me. <coughs> when it comes to karma, the big question is, why does it exist? Karma exists in order for us to audit our own soul. Because remember, when we die or when we pass away, what's going to happen? We are going to be judged right now if we're going to be judged karma allows us to judge ourselves karma allows us to judge ourselves based off our, our current path okay now if you don't like the path that you're on or whatever then you change it right now let's go back to the beginning right i said all of that to tie back to the cause and the effect of Desired and undesired. What is desired in you may be undesired in someone else. That's that's the trick. Okay. You may want it to be sunny today. That's favorable for you. But there's somebody else who wanted to be rainy because it's favorable to them. Your favor, your favorable can be somebody else's unfavorable. Your unfavorable is favored by someone else. That is what that is the interconnection of karma, right? It's a ripple effect. 
That's what karma is. And we had to look at karma based off of what it would look like. It would look like an ocean, right? Let's say if this is an ocean. In this ocean, you had a drop of water, right? Let me show you. There's a drop of water here. That drop of water ripples out, right? It ripples out to everybody else. Once they hit these edges, guess what? They start rippling back this way. And rippling back this way. Rippling back this way. Rippling back this way. And now you just got choppy water, right? So basically, just like how I talked about the law of mentalism, basically it's like this. Who you are Let's say, let's start with you. Who you are, when you take the time to perfect yourself, because there's two, well, when you take the time to perfect yourself, right? When you take the time to heal yourself, when you take the time to understand yourself, it helps you to understand others. Why that is important with karma? is because how you treat others essentially is a reflection of how you feel about yourself, okay? Now, this is why I talked about that with the ripple effect, because let's say you have, it's you, right? What's going on with you affects your family, right? What goes on in the family affects your community. What happens in your community affects the city. What happens in the city affects the state. You see where I'm going with this? What happens in the state affects the nation. What happens in your nation affects the world. You see how those ripples started getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Now, once it gets all the way out here, guess what? What's going on in the world affects your nation, it affects your state, then it affects your city, then it affects your community, then it affects your family, and then it affects you. And then what you do affects your family, and then your community, and then the city, state, nation, world. And it just continuously keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's essentially what karma is. That's what how karma operates. That's what it looks like, okay? We talk about what karma is, right? We talked about why karma exists. Karma exists to allow us to judge ourselves before judgment day. Because when it comes to karma, a lot of people think, oh, I did a lot of messed up stuff. I'm going to hell, right? Well, it's like this when it comes to karma. The man or woman that is man enough to be judged for their life without having, without the desire to change it is the one who truly will be in paradise. You know what that means? Although I did good things in my life, although I did bad things in my life, this is the life I envisioned for myself. Good or bad, regardless of if, the, if it's desired or undesired, I will take the consequences, full unrestricted consequences for everything that comes my way because I have truly lived my life according to my own virtue. That is what life is about. That is what Judgment Day is about. Those who have confidence, who who are who are who they are, and is confident in what they believe enough to take the consequences, good or bad, for what they put out. Nothing else matters. That's it. At the end of the day, that's all it's ever going to be. Based off of that, you're going to be sent wherever, but you won't be sad or hurt or in pain. All the pain in hell, I put like this, 90% of the pain in hell comes from regret. That's where it comes from. It comes from regret. It's regretting not changing, regretting this, regretting this decision, regretting that. You eliminate that torture and that pain by being confident in who you are. The, just, the judgments that you made 
living with it and sticking by it. It's not easy to say, but that's just the truth. Okay, that's all I got with this. Uh, this is the final one with the karma. After this, we are shifting into uh, a different directive, different direction with the uh, with my spiritual journey. Um, I just felt bad not completing it. So I wanted to make sure I completed this set. Oh, I got 30 minutes. So I got about this 10 more minutes to add more shit in. Okay. Okay. So I guess um, perhaps, uh, I mean, that's it. There's nothing else to explain. Those who get it, get it. And those who don't, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to reread re it, I guess, or re-listen. But this is the law of karma. This is how it works. The laws of hermeticism are not bad. People think of principles and laws as bad. It's not. It's shaped this way for a reason. It's definitely shaped this way for a reason. For good reason. So, that being said, that's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, I am going to pull cards today because I do have an important message to tell today. All right. Love y'all all. Take it easy. And this is not to change your life or to, you know, make you think a certain kind of way. All these videos are just things that I picked up on my spiritual journey. And it's only designed to give you something to think about. That's it. Whatever way that you take this is not positive. I mean, it's not negative at all because some people might think it's complete bullshit. And that's OK. That's fine. Some people, everybody has a different opinion, you know, but the way I see it is whatever, you, if you could take any, if you could take some away from it, make it your own and live by it and it makes you a better person. That's all this is about you being a better version of yourself. That's it. So that's all you got. Peace.